All right, so for a little while, I've been actually talking about installing custom ROMs on a phone and explaining how to do it. And based on the thousands or hundreds of videos rather that I have made, I've now come to the conclusion that I should probably get on and make that video. So, hey guys, my name is Ryan Thomas with Failtech. This is the Nexus 5, which is what we'll be using today. And today I'm actually gonna be teaching you how to install from start to finish a custom ROM on your phone. I do need to point out that this phone has never had custom software on it in the past and it has had some boot loops. So today I'm gonna to be trying to rectify that and try and install some new software, namely Lineage OS. And just to prove that he is on stock software, there you go. So first things first, you're going to need your phone. You're going to need a data cable. USB 3 would be better, but we are stuck with USB 2 for now. And you're going to need a computer. I'm using a Windows PC for this. I do not know how to do this on Mac. If you have a Mac, install Windows VM and just do it that way. You will need to install this program called ADB and Fastboot. It basically allows you to view the phone with a command line, which is what we're gonna be using today. I'm gonna to try and make it as simple as possible and I will leave a link to an XDA developers forum thread so hopefully you can kind of go step by step that way but i'm going to be trying to guide you through the magic of video today all right so one thing you're going to want to do is actually load up the settings go down to about phone and i believe it is build number spam it a few times and you will get developer settings which is important because once you plug it into your computer this is this is what we're going to be needing so you go out of about phone and now you should have a pair of parentheses right there and it should say developer options you go in there you turn it on obviously because they're on and you're going to want to enable usb debugging you've probably heard this before it's very important that you have usb debugging and if you ever have any problems connecting to your pc just revoke the USB debugging authorization and then put it back on and hopefully that should sort it. But you're gonna need this to enable you to use that command line to control the device. This isn't a step, but I do wanna show you what we've got. So today we've actually got a bunch of different software here. We've got Lineage, which is our OS that we're gonna be putting on there. Open G apps, which is what you're gonna to need to install the Google services, not the applications, but the services. Uh, SuperSu, which is what we're gonna to use to gain root access and TWRP, which is what we're going to be using to install the custom recovery. And I will go through this as we go on, but the four main things we have in our folder here called Nexus 5. All right, so next thing you're gonna to want to do is to actually boot the device into Fastboot or the bootloader. So what we're gonna to need to do here is, uh, this is difficult for me because the actual uh, buttons are broken on this one, but if we just restart or we power it off first, so this is gonna turn off the device. It is plugged into the computer right now, which should, should work pretty well. We're actually unplug it first and then as you can see the charging is still there and I believe it is volume down and the power button so if we hold down the power button and the volume and we hold down the the power button and the volume down button and we get into this which is fast boot mode as you can probably see on the screen then we're going to plug our device in just with a simple cable like this it will take us to the computer and we're just going to type in cmd to load up command prompt then we're going to run fastboot devices with a space and it loads up and th this is what you'll see a random string of numbers and fastboot that means that your device is connected if you have multiple devices you'll have multiple devices of course but if you have one this means that you're doing it right then we're going to type in fastboot oem unlock like this with a space in between fastboot oem and unlock press enter it'll do its thing and then you're going to get this message appear on the screen and it will tell us do we want to unlock the bootloader yes we do so unfortunately i'm going to have to get my screwdriver again go back up and then press that one so the bootloader is now going to be unlocked it's erasing something or other it's just doing it right now which you can see on the screen or you won't be able to see it's blurred out but it's actually uh, doing something on the screen it's got three dots and hopefully there we go so lock state is now unlocked next we're going to do fast boot reboot so you can see my previous commands here just to clarify everyone with the c users right and in front of that that is the command that i i did fast boot reboot is an important step so don't skip this out just because you think that it's a reboot it's simple it should be doing its thing now now don't panic your device should go to this kind of screen you might have a little loading bar something like that it's actually just going to be configuring some things so once it's finished we'll move on to the next step for now i'm going to put the phone down and i'm going to have a cup of tea because i'm english 
All right, boys and girls, so your phone will have rebooted, that's what the fast boot reboot will do, and it will come up with this, which is basically the whole thing is flashed. Like I said at the beginning, do back up your stuff because this is what's gonna happen. So now we've got the Nexus 5 in its stock state. This will be the same operating system as we started with, so no custom OS yet, but you've successfully unlocked the bootloader, which is important, well done. Okay, what we're gonna do right now is a similar thing we did to start with, so holding the power button down, we're gonna turn it off. So make sure it's off before you do this, that would work very, very well. And what we're gonna be doing is holding volume down when you can, this should be a lot easier if your buttons are intact. And the power button, and it will take us into this menu that we're quite familiar with at this point. Okay, so I want you to set the phone down, make sure it's connected to the PC, mind you. And we're just going to, before we do any anything that we need to, we're just gonna run fast boot devices to make sure that it's still there. It should be there, and yes, of course, it's still there. So we've got our folder here with our, our, our stuff in there. We're going to be installing a custom recovery, which is this one. Now you can rename it, but I'm gonna show you a tool that means you don't have to type in all of this rubbish when you're actually inserting the command. So you're in the home folder, we're going to CD to enter a folder. So CD desktop, then we're going to do DIR for directory. This will show you all of the folders. Bloody hell, look at all of this stuff. So we're gonna go CD Nexus 5 like this and you press NEX or, or whatever the start and you can press tab, which allows you to fill in the rest of the file name. Then you press enter and it will enter that folder now. So as you can see, we've gone from the desktop to the Nexus 5 folder. This is how you uh, use uh, command prompt to get around Windows. And it's a similar story when you get to the actual phone's SD card as well. So now we're going to do, now that we're in the folder, we've got to make sure that we're in the same folder Nexus 5 that this is in right now. So we're in there, we're just gonna close that, and we're going to do fast boot. Oh, make sure I've spelled that right, yep. Yeah. Flash recovery. Well, I've spelled that wrong. Make sure you spell everything right, otherwise it's not gonna work. Fast boot, flash, recovery, and then our recovery image. So what do we call this? This one is TWRP. Now you can use Clockwork Mod. Um, I wouldn't personally recommend, I remember press tab and it'll fill out the rest of the uh, of the, the file name. Uh, you can use Clockwork Mod. I don't recommend it. I used it when I had my Nexus 4, but I actually prefer TWRP. A lot of people will use twerp. As, as the acronym kind of spells out, to be able to give you this kind of software. Uh, Clockwork Mod is, is okay, I suppose, but I, I haven't used it in years now, so I would recommend using Twerp if you can. Right, ladies and gents, all of this is done now. It said finish total time 1.785 seconds, and we're going to use the power, <laughs> the volume buttons rather. I'm so sorry for this. We're going to be down, going down, because you use the volume buttons to go up and down here. We're going to go to restart bootloader, and then we're gonna press the power button and it should enter us into the bootloader. Now we're going to go back down and that restart was important, boys. We're gonna go down to recovery mode and we're gonna hit the power key. And it should, hopefully, if we've done this all right, boot us into, there we go, the team win recovery. So unmodified system partition, keep read only. No, we do not want to keep it read only, so we want to be swiping. And we've got ourselves into our little recovery. Now, this is a good place to be. You can stop here and you can just leave it the way it is if you really want to back out. This is just going to be a useful tool to have on your phone. But we want to go a step further and we want to install a few things on the device. So now that we've actually got to this stage, we're in a very good position. We're going to set the phone down as long as it's still plugged in to the computer. And we're going to be moving straight back to the computer right now. All right, so we're back on the computer now. We're gonna open up a new Windows Explorer and you should get your Nexus 5 in the This PC or My Computer window. So we've got our my drives here. As you can see, we've got plenty of drives. We're just gonna click on Nexus 5, which will give us our internal storage. Now this is what you would call the SD card on the phone and we'll get to that in a little bit. That doesn't really matter for uh, so much for now. But what we're gonna do is we don't wanna go into any other directory. We wanna be in internal storage right here. So the same one as twerp, DCIM, downloads and all that kind of thing. And you just wanna take the three here. So not twerp, we don't want twerp because we've already installed that. We want these three images right here or the, these three files. And you don't have to unzip them or anything. You just place them straight in on the internal storage. And this might take a little while depending on your, your file size and also the transfer speed of the, the cable. Maybe you're using Type-C 3.1 or something, I don't know. 
Okay, so everything is over on the device, which is fantastic. Now we're gonna move back to the device and there are a few things that I need to tell you about before we complete the next step. One thing is if your device has gone to sleep, you can just unlock it whilst in the recovery, it's fantastic. Then we're going to go to install and as you can probably see if we scroll down, we've got ourselves our files, which is fantastic. Now one thing to say is you're going to be installing Lineage OS and then OpenG apps. SuperSue is for when you want to root it. I've left it on there. I'm not actually going to root this device, but if you want to go ahead, I might make a video on that. It depends how, how badly you guys want to see that. But when we install these, do not, for the, for the love of God, do not boot into the OS until you've installed OpenG apps as well. So we're gonna install Lineage first, then we're gonna install OpenG apps, and do not boot into the OS until you've completed both, because otherwise you will not be able to get your G apps. So what we're gonna do is click Lineage, and as you can see, make sure that file is right, and do not click Reboot after installation is complete. That is something you do not want to do. And we are just going to swipe to confirm the flash. Now this may take a little while, so I'm gonna put the phone down and I'm just gonna wait until it's done. All right, so after some kajiggering and a big headache, I wanna tell you about the, the experience I just had. I was installing the Lineage OS. Turns out you actually have to dive into a file. You have to dive into, I believe, the Meta Inf, then Google, then Android, then there's an installer script, there's a script kind of update. You need to delete the first two assert lines or assert lines in there. Then you need to go back, you need to actually wipe the cache by going into wipe, advanced wipe, and just wipe all of those, but do not wipe internal storage. So uh, swipe to wipe, and then go back and install it again. Now, we've installed our install app, it's actually called install now because I've had to rename the file. Now we're going to be installing gapp, so make sure this is the file, just making sure, yeah. And we just want to swipe to confirm the flash of that. And once that's done, we're going to get updating partition uh, details done. We're gonna wipe the cache, the Delvet cache, uh, right there. So hopefully that, yep, that's done now. And now, what we should have is, we've left SuperSue on here if you want to root it. I don't want to root it at the moment. And wow, the CPU's gone up a little bit. Uh, we are back to the main menu now. What we're going to do is, hopefully, if you've done everything right, you're going to click Reboot. You're going to click System. And it should do its thing. Now, you're not going to get any of the settings or any of the data from your previous install. So you're going to have to reconfigure, or if you've managed to somehow save the file, uh, then reconfigure that. And as you can see, we're installing or have installed Lineage. It is going to take a while on its first boot, so don't worry if it takes like 10, 20, even half an hour. It should take a little longer on the first boot because it is configuring your applications. Of course, the system apps, not the ones like Facebook or YouTube. All right, so for me, this took about, uh, I would say, a maximum of five minutes, probably under five minutes for me. And we've booted into the Lineage OS installer. So we're going to go next, we're going to go to UK because I'm not in the US unfortunately. We're going to install as a fresh start. We're going to skip all of these networks. If we can, do not use any network for this setup just because it's just going to take a little while. I want to show you the entire process. Uh, this is this is definitely not the time. Let's, let's see, what is it? It's, God, it's October now. 3rd of October uh, 2017. Okay, that, that didn't take too long. And the time is currently... 1434 let's just call it that let's just let's just call it ft because we're fail tech we are going to turn off a, a some some of these uh some of these services because we don't need those and then we're going to click all set and start off our lineage so now we're booting into the OS itself. You've got yourself, as you, you're probably familiar with, with this, it looks very similar to 6.0. So if you're on 6.0 and you're going to 7.0, it's very similar. Um, I really like these smooth animations. I think they look absolutely gorgeous. 
I just think they look amazing, especially on this 5-inch five, uh, five 1080p IPS display. As you can see, because we installed GApps, we are getting the Google services. Unfortunately, it will ask me to sign in because I, I don't actually have a network. Like I said, I skipped the Wi-Fi. Um, but yes, we do get the app drawer. It's not. It's just a simple app drawer. It's not going to be the, the Pixel launcher. Hopefully, we can try and install that. And I'll do that in another video. But what we're going to do now, just to validate everything's working, is we're settings. We're going to go down all the way to Android. As you can see, about phone if I just get some nice close focus on that Android 7.1.2 which is what we've installed if we click on there it's going to show us that we are installing Linear, which is of course based off of Cyanogen and of course it can't check for updates because I haven't connected it to Wi-Fi so 7.1.2 is the latest update it's going to give us some some more security features it's going to give us the ability to customize our phone a little bit more and of course it is the latest operating system so so at this point, I just want to thank you all so much for watching. Please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll try and make this video as edited and as clear and precise as possible. But of course, it may take a little while to do that. So if this video isn't up for a little bit, then you know why. Anyway, guys, again, thank you so much for watching. It really does help me out if you if you like or dislike the video based on, uh, on your thoughts. Please do comment, again, with your thoughts and experiences. And hopefully, you can help each other out in the comments. Subscribe if you're new around here so never miss a video like this one. I do phone reviews but I'm also really into my tech as you can see I've got the red the goal on screen right there and I also do computer stuff so if you really want to see more of that please do subscribe and check out my channel sorry for my lazy eye uh, my name is Ryan Thomas for Powertech and I'll see you in the next one peace